I'm happy to report that uh, CONS have finished their spring burning that maintains the watershed level fire treatments. Uh, even a pandemic can't stop our fires. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, John Blair and I were on a burn crew running the hoses on a backfire. We were gagging in the thick smoke. We had no visibility and we were jogging to keep up with our fire truck. Our radios were constant yelling and chatter for us to keep moving. The next day I received this photo that you can see from Barb Van Slyke and she titled it, This is Why You Were Running. From our vantage, John and I had no idea that a 25 foot tall head fire was headed our way. We just followed our orders and got our back fire set. This exemplifies why Conza works so well. We have a great group of people at all levels who know when to lead and when to follow. And occasionally, but just occasionally, Blair and I are actually a help rather than a hindrance. I'd like to recognize a portion of the people who make all of this possible. Um, I'd especially like to, to call out some of our key staff. Joel Hocus, who runs our schoolyard LTER program. Yang Shaw, who is our IM. Pam Blackmore, who is our GIS specialist. Jennifer Rhodes, our program administrator. Courtney Tobler, our analytical chemist. And Amanda Kuhl, Mark Sandwick, and Jeff Taylor, who oversee all the long-term data collection. I've been the PI for the Cons of Prairie for about the past three years. My leadership this style has been described by some as based on disturbance and resilience. Perhaps that why, is why we were placed in this category of talks today. Similarly, Tallgrass Prairie is characterized by disturbance and resilience. At the start of the Conza program, this ecosystem reflected a relatively uniform history of grazing and fire management. Four decades of experimentally imposed factorial combinations of fire and grazing initiated in LTRs one through three, coupled with nutrient climate and restoration experiments initiated during LTRs four through seven, resulted in a variety of ecosystem states that exist on the landscape. The inherent variability within this ecosystem highlights the need for long-term studies to, to increase our understanding of ecological responses to future changes in key drivers, identify the mechanisms that promote and reinforce these changes, and determine the ecological changes that we have, have observed if they are reversible. Our most significant news from the past year is the submission of our renewal grant proposal, LTER 8, in March. Our conceptual model builds on the legacies of previous grants. LTR 8 builds uh, explicitly on the foundation of manipulations of historical and global change drivers at CONSA to evaluate the mechanisms that underlie sensitivity and resilience in tall grass prairie. Our research is organized into four thematic areas. Watershed level study of long-term effects of historical drivers like fire and grazing, experimental manipulation of global change drivers, and cessation or reversal of selected drivers and human intervention by manipulation of drivers to facilitate grassland restoration. With the time that I have remaining, I wanna highlight two projects that exemplify what excites us about future CONSA research. The insight provided by our core long-term data for novel discoveries and manipulative experiments that have become a hallmark of the CONSA system. Recently, we had a manuscript by Ellen Welty, one of our former PhD students published in PNAS, and it's received considerable media attention in a follow-up spotlight article in Science last week. Ellen and her colleagues examined how increasing grass productivity following climate change and increased CO2 over time have resulted in nutrient dilution um, in our grasses with corresponding reductions in dietary quality for insect herbivores. Increased nutrient dilution over decades is one factor impacting declines in consumer populations of grasshoppers by roughly 2% per year. The panels on the left-hand side here illustrate these changes over time, grass biomass um, and dilution in the top panel, insect abundance in the bottom panel. And the panels on the right correlate biomass and grasshopper abundance with nutrient dilution. These insights inv investigating the mechanism in the terrestrial insect declines would not be possible without the core long-term data facilitated by the LTER network. Finally, I'd like to highlight a new experiment that's being led by Kim Komatsu from the Smithsonian. Kim and her colleagues are asking how consumer size classes impact core ecosystem processes and trophic dynamics at different scales. Historically, we've focused on large mammal herbivores with less focus on smaller size classes. The consume project manipulates bison, small mammals, or insects and contains subplots for core data collection with added space for add-on measurements as new questions develop. The block design shown here with all six treatment combinations is replicated nine times each on two different watersheds with varying fire frequency. This platform is robust and relatively easy to initiate, making it a great experiment for cross-site comparisons. We encourage and even solicit folks from other sites to utilize this platform for questions they might like to ask at CONSA 
and encourage others to implement similar experiment at their sites for future comparisons. Thank you very much.